Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged USDA Prime Mangus and Prime Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you try their best-in-class New York steaks, the king of all those cowboy cut and tomahawk ribeyes. Hell, even, yes, the filet mignon. Incredible, incredible, incredible. In fact, Wait, you try those burgers. Half pound burgers, prime Wagyu, USDA prime Wagyu. Best I've ever had, likely be the best you ever had. Check them out at uppercutchops.com. That's www.uppercutchops.com. Or give them a call and find out what's for dinner. 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935 for uppercutchops.com. All right, a big welcome in everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and our independents from coast to coast. Everybody watching on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Oceanic, Time Warner, and WOW Cable Television, as well as Hotel TV. Well, shoot, in about 600,000 rooms from coast to coast, gaining about 4 million impressions per hour. Crazy numbers. And welcome in everybody else that's streaming or listening in on the recorded side on pick your favorite podcast platform so we're everywhere folks you can't get away from us that includes apple and iheart and spotify and google and amazon and audible and all those fun ones anyway folks lots and lots of people listening in and lots of good content to cover how about this right from the top of the show how about the big 12 making news you know kansas has been doing pretty well in the football world but how about this how about kansas dodges a major punishment from the NCAA following an alleged multi-year investigation. Now, how do you just dodge a postseason ban and all this other crap? I gotta tell you, man, multiple sources out there reporting on this one. This one comes from Yahoo. And Kansas men's basketball escaped serious penalties from the NCAA, a multi-year investigation into the program's involvement in the college basketball federal corruption scandal. Yeah, folks, that's good old Kansas and the whole Bill Self regime. Apparently, the NCAA's Independent Accountability Review process announced that Kansas's five-level allegations have been downgraded to a level two from a level one case. And the program has received a three-year probation through October of 2026. Now why is that? How does that just magically happen? Right? It's the old basketball blue blood, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I have an opinion, too. Show me the money! And it happens to be that, well, my opinion is probably not the same as other people's because I think that money was involved. But that's me, and I always say stuff like that. And there's a lot of you people out there who say the same damn thing. Now, the decision comes after Kansas self-imposed penalties at the start of the 2022-23 season following its 2022 NCAA tournament win. Gee, how convenient. Coach Bill Self and assistant coach Curtis Townsend served a four-game suspension while the school also imposed recruiting limitations. And the level one charge against each coach is now at level three. How convenient is that? Show me the money! I wonder why that happened. The light punishment is a whimper of a conclusion to what had been a contentious back and forth between Kansas and the NCAA after the school was implicated in the 2017 FBI investigation into the way payments were allegedly being made to players to attain and attend certain schools 
the NCAA sent a notice of allegations to Kansas four years ago that alleged three level one violations, a lack of institutional control charge, and a head coach responsibility charge against Bill Self. What are we talking about here, folks? I don't know. Hmm. Show me the money! Maybe a little bit of that. Maybe a little bit of money. Change hands. I don't know. I wasn't there, but who knows? The notice of allegations centered around the recruitment of Billy Preston and Silvio D'Souza, according to testimony from the corruption trial and Adidas consultant directly, and better yet, directed nearly $100,000 to Preston's mother while another payment was made to D'Souza's guardian. Come on. And of course, Adidas is the apparel manufacturer for Kansas and text messages between Bill Self and TJ Gasnola. The Adidas consultant showed the two disgust recruiting. That's right. So Kansas must vacate some wins in 2017, 2018. Big deal. As a part of the punishment, Kansas is forced to vacate any wins it had while D'Souza played during the 17-18 season. However, the Jayhawks went 31-8 that season and advanced to the Final Four before losing to eventual national champion Villanova. Now, D'Souza played in every NCAA tournament game and 20 games overall during the season. Jayhawks were 15-5 in the games he played and could no longer officially list themselves as a Final Four participant in that season. Yeah, so what? I just want to know what happened to... Show me the money! Hmm, was there any money involved? I'm going to keep saying that. I want to keep asking that because I believe there may have been. Nonetheless... Since those games are officially being vacated, Self's official NCAA career win total must have those games vacated. And before the announcement, Bill Self had a career record of 787 and 237 and was number 15 on the all-career men's basketball wins list. I wonder how many other violations may have occurred during that career. We'll get back to that. The level... Three, better yet, the three level one allegations initially leveled against or levied against the school signaled that the NCAA was looking to level different significances, penalties. Yes, you heard that right. That was kind of a mouthful against the school. So there's a lot of stuff going on. After the FBI investigation, Kansas had contended that it was simply a victim. Yes, Kansas was a victim. <laughs> <laughs> of the scandal and published lengthy response to the NCAA in the 2020 season that disputed the governing body's allegation. Hmm. The length of time it took for a resolution to the case ultimately worked in Kansas's favor. Gee, I wonder why that is. All right, everybody at one time say, Show me the money! In my opinion, that's what it could be. The NCAA has trended towards smaller penalties against schools involved in the corruption scandal in recent years. Why is that? Okay, everybody, say it again. Show me the money! Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Maybe it has something to do with the allowance of the NIL money, the name, image, and likeness thing. Now, Kansas counted, of course, on that trend continuing with its self-imposed penalties a year ago, and that bet paid off ahead of its IA. RP hearing in April. Now, in case you're keeping score, again, that whole IARP is the accountability review process is what it's technically about. Now, if that is the case, why would they self-impose restrictions? Ask yourself, there has to be some method to the madness. Well, somebody probably said, look, you're under investigation. You probably want to punish your own people ahead of NCAA punishment. I guess that makes a little bit of sense. But then again, maybe it's kind of like time served. I'm not really sure how that one works. But it sure seems to me that Kansas, because of their longstanding blue blood reputation, well, they got away with having a ban and having essentially like the death penalty. We think back to SMU for football, right? So that postseason ban is really what this is all about. Now, you may recall the SMU football team, the program at Southern Methodist University, they got the death sentence, which was, I think it was, what, 20 years or something like that. They basically had to reapply 
for uh, the reinstatement of their basketball or uh, football program, nonetheless. And eventually they got it. And now they are going to be a member of the Atlantic Coast Conference along with Stanford and Cal starting, I believe it's next season. Either way, the reality is this. Kansas, with their incredible foresight, you know, they must have a crystal ball or something. Not really sure what that is, but they must have some luck on their side. Maybe they better come out to Vegas and place a bet or go to California or whatever. Go buy one of those Powerball tickets because of the size of those enormous jackpots. But it's amazing how Kansas won't face a postseason ban while other schools can't get away with it. And the one school I want to know about why they never get investigated, at least I've never seen it, is Notre Dame. And Notre Dame. In football, it sure seems that there have been a lot of questions. And those questions hmm, always seem to have gone away. I'm not really sure why that is. How we shifted to them? Because I can. In any event, it seems to me that there's an ongoing issue with certain schools getting certain well, certain uh, accommodations. Let's kind of put it that way. And the one thing that I'm curious about is why didn't Kansas have to face the postseason ban? Oh, that's right. They've had a self-imposed ban or something like that. Listen, the whole thing, in my opinion, is a big, hot, steaming pile of cow dung. And that's what happens in middle America. Anyway, back here in a few minutes on the circus. Lots more to come. Don't go anywhere. See if we can shake up some more people. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Could you use a little extra money right now? If you'd like to borrow up to $100,000 and get pre-approved in minutes, call the number we'll give you at the end of this commercial. Our lending partners have already loaned millions of dollars to individuals just like you, and we're ready to lend you up to $100,000 if you qualify. Even if your credit is not perfect, you could use the money to pay off high-interest credit cards for home renovations or consolidate existing debt. You can get flexible, easy-to-pay terms. The consultation to find out if you qualify is free. Free. To find out if you qualify for our special financing program, call this toll-free number 24 hours a day. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. That's 800-335-1376. Important terms and conditions apply. Not all applicants will qualify. Loan amount, annual percentage rate, and term will vary depending on credit worthiness. Applying does not guarantee approval. Account approval is subject to verification and confirmation of your credit history and acceptance by a lender. If you choose to apply for a loan through us, a consumer report will be obtained to evaluate your credit worthiness in connection with your application for credit. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Agus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Agus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. 
You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Thanks, Roy, and welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, live in Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP TV. Folks, make sure to check out the sportscircus.com for our upcoming guests. Our prior guests are recorded shows, which are podcasts. They can be found on any podcast platform. And of course, some of the affiliates from CBS, NBC, Fox, and our independents also have their own archives too. So you can find those there. Also, make sure you check out the partners page at thesportcircus.com. Lots of great partners. One of those is the College of Southern Nevada Athletics, csncoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. That's csncoyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. All right, welcome back to everybody listening in on our affiliates, including our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500, KHKA, that's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome in to everybody that may be listening in to Southern California with our friends over at NBC News and CNBC Financial right here in Las Vegas, KJPT Jackpot Radio over in Auburn, Alabama, WAUD, that's home of the Atlanta Braves. Big hello to our friends in Atlanta on WDJY 99.1 FM all the way down to South Florida. That would be WBGY 90.3 FM. And, of course, all of our affiliates. Well, we just can't name them all. They are what they are. They're everywhere. All right. Also, welcome in to everybody. Cox Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, Wow Cable Television, Hotel TV. Everybody streaming. Everybody listening on the Mars Rover as well. All right. So I did mention the College of Southern Nevada Athletics as our partner. They've been with us since the very beginning. Of course, they always deserve a nice round of applause. And one of their products happens to have played baseball there. And then, well, let's put it this way. One of their products is a guy by the name of Bryce Harper. Now, Bryce Harper, look, College of Southern Nevada is a personal favorite. And hell, I've even taken classes there. It is a very good school, arguably the best school in Southern Nevada. So we're going to give them a nice round of applause. Not a big fan of Bryce Harper. Not a fan at all. Not at all. Now, as the playoffs march on with the Diamondbacks beating the Dodgers in three straight, the Astros advancing to play the Rangers in a divisional rematch for the American League Championship Series, the Diamondbacks await the winner of Philadelphia and Atlanta. Now, we will openly say that we're rooting for Atlanta, especially because of, yes, Bryce Harper. This guy. This guy. You know, watching him with the throat slit motion after he homers back to the, as he's rounding third, he gets just about ready to tag home plate. He makes that throat slit motion to the catcher of the Atlanta Braves. Very, very, very poor taste. And this guy has been nothing but the subject, in my opinion, of controversy, ill-fated mayhem. Uh, Me personally, I just don't like the guy for a lot of reasons that some of it we can't talk about here. Some of those are personal things that I know about what happened in a former life. And for me, frankly saying, I can't say anything because we don't want to say anything negative. But what I will say, I don't think he's good for baseball. He may be a good baseball player. But you know what the interesting thing is? Sometimes you look back and look, not everybody likes certain people. And let's go all the way back to that movie, Field of Dreams. You may remember Ray Liotta was saying as Shoeless Joe Jackson, he was saying to Kevin Costner in his role, he was saying, how many other guys want to come play? Actually, no, it was Kevin Costner saying to Ray Liotta, how many other guys want to come out and play? And Ray said there are a lot of guys, but the one guy they never invited out was Ty Cobb because they hated that son of a bee. Well, look, there have been guys in Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, pick your favorite sport, whatever it is, that are just not liked for a lot of reasons. Bryce Harper, to me, is that guy. I just can't stomach that guy. I don't care if he's from here in Vegas. Hey, Bryce, let me ask you a question. What have you done for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics? 
Have you done anything for them? Just wondering, what have you done? I don't know. I'm wondering. All right, I'll wait for that call. Bryce, give us a call, 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935. Bryce, go ahead and give us a call, 702-799-9935. What have you done for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics? This is me asking, not them asking. I'm asking because I'm not a believer in your quasi or wannabe goodwill. I want to know what you've done for the community. Why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me? There's a big boxer here in this town as well that's been notorious for not doing things for the community. What have you done, Bryce? So here it is, NBC Sports Philadelphia. Let's go ahead and greet them with a round of booze. That's right. That's for you, NBC Sports Philadelphia. They have an article out, and their article says, Harper reminds Braves why they shouldn't poke the bear. Shut up. Here it is, NBC Sports Philadelphia. Once again, Bryce Harper didn't stop at second base. This time, Orlando Arcia didn't find it so funny. After making the final out of game two of the NLDS on the base pass, Harper was, from a base running blunder, Harper was reportedly the subject of ridicule in the Braves clubhouse post game. Arcia was seen repeating, at a boy, Harper, at a boy, Harper, after reporters entered referencing Harper being doubled off of first base after Michael Harris, the second spectacular catch on Nick Castellanos with two outs in the ninth inning. Now, those that saw the game, you know what we're talking about. Those that didn't, watch the video. Anyway, NBC Sports Philadelphia continues with, there was a good bit of chatter about the comment in Philly's clubhouse pregame. Manager Rob Thompson said, without offering judgment one way or another because that's what he has to do as the manager. Harper responded the way Harper tends to respond, with a big, loud swing is what Philadelphia, NBC Sports Philadelphia says. Blah, blah, blah. He took Bryce Elder out of the yard to right for a three-run jack in the game-changing third inning. That went out to center field in the fifth as well. So Harper made sure to shoot Arcia a glare as he rounded third And then again, after his second homer in two innings, just two innings later. The Phillies hung six runs on Elder and the Braves in the third inning of game three of the NLDS at Citizen Bank Park. God forbid we don't forget the name of the bank that sponsors this. We'll just say in Philadelphia, just as they did to Spencer Strider in the same spot, the third inning of game three in the NLDS a year ago. Okay, so there's history going here. Let's continue on. NBC Sports Philadelphia says that rally was capped by Reese Hoskins' bat slam three-run homer. This October, it was Harper's turn and a 10-2 win. Castellanos opened the Phillies' third with a game-tying home run, his third off Elder in the last three weeks. Then the Phillies batted around after Harper cleared the bases. Alec Bohm and Bryson Stott reached space and scored on a two-run double by JT Realmuto. Now, NBC Sports Philadelphia says every bit of insurance is necessary this time of the year, as the Phillies saw in Game 2, which they led by four runs of the sixth inning until they choked. I added that. They kept tacking on with solo shots by Trey Turner, Brandon Marsh, and a second from Castellanos. It was a six-homer night, just the second in Major League Baseball playoff history. Castellanos said about 48 hours before delivering their first run, quote, We thrive after we get punched in the face. Close quote. (laughs) Really? Well, there might be more of that down the road. Anyway, Aaron Nola allowed a couple of runs, over five and two-thirds, one of which came around to score Matt Strum. The third and fourth innings were his most important. Nola allowed a run in third after Raul Acuna Jr. double and Ozzy Albee singled, all in the middle of the Braves' order due to up is retired. He retired Austin Riley, walked Matt Olson, and struck out Marcelo Zuna to escape with minimal damage. In the fourth, after the Phillies just scored six times, Nola retired the Braves one, two, three, and shut the inning down. Now, NBC Sports Philadelphia says since making the mechanical adjustments to keep his shoulder more square to the plate four starts ago, Nola had a 1.78 ERA, and he has avoided the blow-up inning in each game. In four career postseason starts at Philadelphia, 
Nola has allowed just five earned runs, and he walked off to what had been the loudest standing ovation he's ever received. So be it. The Phillies led the Braves in the best of five series. Actually, they lead them two games to one. And of course, would advance to the NLCS with another win. They have two chances, game four at home and game five if necessary with Zach Wheeler on the bump in Atlanta. So the lingering fear since game two, season momentum, of course, with the late comeback, was squashed apparently, allegedly, with one big inning by the Phillies. Harper, who's hit 354, with nine homers, eight doubles, and 18 RBIs in 22 playoff games as a Philly, has been one of the most clutch athletes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In, they say in Philadelphia sports, but what they seem to be forgetting, NBC Sports Philadelphia, is that the city of Philadelphia has what? More professional sports losses than any other city. <laughs> Guess what? There's more of that to come. Just like what happened in the World Series last year. Choke, choke, choke. Anyway, there are better ways to track such things, according to them, these days, with stats like win probability added and all these other saber metrics crap like that. Look, how about Harper's throat cutting motion after the home run? That's a bad move. You don't do stuff like that. You never want to show up the other team. And Harper, in my opinion, has a history of being a jerk and doing that kind of garbage. It's bad for sports. It's bad for kids to see that, to think it's okay to try to show people up. It's just as bad as bat flips and all that other crap. Be a man, get out there, play the game, do what you do. You're paid millions of dollars to be a professional athlete, not to be a professional jerk. Back here in a few minutes, folks. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and All-Star Celebrity Guests for Chaos and Controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus the SportsCircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook, we all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. Pay the IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. The old way of living with diabetes is a pain. You've got to remember to do your testing and always need to stick your fingers to test your blood sugar. The new way to live your life with diabetes is with a continuous glucose monitor. Apply a discrete sensor on your body and it continuously monitors your glucose levels, helping you spend more time in range and freeing you from painful finger sticks. If you are living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you use insulin or have had hypoglycemic events, you might be eligible for a CGM through your insurance benefits. U.S. Med partners with over 500 private insurance companies and Medicare. We offer free shipping, 90-day supplies, and we bill your insurance. Call us today for a free benefits check. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 800 659 7805. That's 800 659 7805. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Wow. 
quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Hey, this is Josie Scott from Josie Scott Saliva, and you're listening to The Sports Circus with Sal Tuzzolino. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Mary Master Cell, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. This segment brought to you in part by our friends over at the American Business Trust Company, helping companies with strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing companies with physical locations or on the internet. You decide. For more information, contact the American Business Trust Company at info at abtrustco.com. That's info at abtrust.com. Co.com. That's info at abtrustco.com. Info at abtrustco.com. Get another partner that's been with us since the very beginning. Thank you to the American Business Trust Company. And welcome back to everybody on TV and radio. You know who you are. Whether you're listening on one of our network affiliates, our independents on television, streaming, listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, which are our recorded shows in full. We don't fix it in the mix. This is not a podcast. This is a regular FCC regulated television and radio show, unlike the three million other podcasts that's sitting out there, which is sort of an abomination in itself. But nonetheless, you know. It is what it is. I guess everybody wants to be a star, so everybody's got a podcast these days. But this is a real show, and thanks for joining our real show on all of those affiliates out there. All right. How about something positive? How about this? How about, let's see a showing of hands of who all those hockey fans are. I'm raising my hand right now. Everybody in Atlanta, you've had a couple of hockey teams you know. Everywhere else across the country, across North America, well, at least uh, Canada, nonetheless, and the United States. Lots of hockey played, and I think, actually, the... Next team, or the next the next team will probably land itself, I'm going to guess, in Houston, which makes a little bit of sense. You might see a team in Houston, and you might see a new franchise possibly, well, in another city near you. We can't say that. Possibly Salt Lake City. Not really sure. Anyway, how about this from the National Hockey League? How about Chicago Blackhawks rookie Connor Bedard scores his first NHL goal, and it was electrifying. Yes! In fact, we should try to pull up the audio clip for it. I'm going to see if I could do that. So while I'm doing this, I want you to sit back and listen here because Connor Bedard, if, look, folks, if you're one of those card collectors, all right, so if you're a sports card collector and you like baseball, football, <laughs> basketball, <laughs> yep, hockey, all those cards, and you've been collecting them since you're a kid like me, I've been collecting them for many, 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 many years. Well, guess what? This is one of those must-have cards. And I just pulled this video up, so I'm not really sure what we're in for here, folks. But I've got something here. Let's see. We want to give credit to the source. And the source in this one, let's go NHL.com. Let's pull this from NHL.com. And let's see if I can go ahead and get this video up here so you can get the actual call from it instead of just from me. Let's see. There might be a little... Quick turnaround for everybody, but especially the youngster. There's the guard dropping the back off to Dotto. Now the guard with a shot, saved by Omar. Coming around is the guard, he scores! His first National Hockey League goal! Wow! What a goal! Wraps it around the goalpost. Pitch and catch with Ryan Donato. He takes a shot, not from a great angle, but look at the net front presence by Hall. Of his National Hockey League career. And there's that quickness push. Wow. That in itself was absolutely incredible. So if you're a fan of hockey and you like fast action, big hitting, and hockey is easily the toughest sport to play. The hardest thing to do in sports is to hit a baseball. But the toughest sport to play from front to back, no question, is hockey. 
Now, a story here, according to the Associated Press, it says, as many expected would be the case, it certainly did not take long for Chicago Blackhawks superstar rookie Connor Bedard to burst onto the scene just over five minutes into the second career regular season game. Bedard buried the one he's been dreaming about forever, giving Chicago the early lead with his first NHL goal. And of course, he always will get rounds of applause. Now, you heard the call by Eddie Olchek and his partner, but I have to tell you, that was very exciting to see that for a kid. And this kid is the, well, he is touted as the next best thing to slice bread, I guess, in Chicago. Now, Bedard literally did all the work on this goal as well. From the brilliant take at the blue line to corral a bad pass and gain possession across the blue line without going off sides. To the nifty back pass that followed to him picking up his own rebound putting the biscuit in the basket, all world wraparound finish. This man, this kid is legit. Two games to played, two points so far. This whole sequence of events was an absolute sight to behold. Of course, his first game was against the Pittsburgh Penguins and his idol, he grew up loving Sid Crosby. And imagine being at center ice, taking a face off. And the referee at the beginning of the season, the referee says, who's dropping the puck says, actually it wasn't a ref, it was a linesman. He said, Connor, Welcome to the NHL. And here he is facing off against his childhood hero, Sid Crosby. And of course, the referee says, Sid, welcome back to another year in, in the National Hockey League and something like that. Can you imagine looking across, directly across from your nose and being your childhood idol in which, which that you actually have to face on the face off? And of course, needless to say, Connor just it must have been stuck in the moment because let's face it. I mean, this was the proverbial dream come true. And of course, he missed the face-off win, of course. And it is what it is. But anyway, what a great story. And a great story. So Bedard literally did everything on that goal, like I said. And the milestone goal came just one night after Connor finally made his highly anticipated regular season debut as an 18-year-old. Yes, as an 18-year-old squaring off against a 36-year-old being Sid Crosby in that season opener. What a great moment for him. Of course... Though the secondary assist for his first point won't be on any career score highlights, but his effort leading up to the marker, of course, did show why he's the most highly regarded prospect since Connor McDavid, some people call him Connor McJesus, came out of junior hockey about a decade ago, flying through the neutral zone and entering the offensive zone with blazing speed, but are dangled around reigning Norris Trophy winner Eric Carlson. Made him look kind of bad, too. Gotta like that. Then seconds after... Along the wall, Bedard executed a beautiful drop pass to Alex Vlasic, who threw a shot before Ryan Donato tapped it in, starting the Hawks' opening night comeback win. Now, also a rookie moment for the ages when Connor went out for the skate. And of course, you go without your helmet for your first lap around. And he forgot something. Yes, he forgot his stick. <laughs> You can't really forget that. Come on, man. Anyway, it's pretty exciting, pretty funny. And let's face it, I mean, the nerves were really rolling. But Connor finished his first career game with one assist on five shots and, of course, on goal and 11 attempts. So this guy was around the puck, controlling 63.25% share of the expected goals at five on five before seamlessly carrying his electrifying play over to Boston with the Bruins. And, of course, a great opening faceoff like I mentioned, but listen, folks, if you are hockey card collectors or sports card collectors, that's kind of a big thing. Look, I've been collecting for a long time, as I mentioned in the opening of this segment. If you're into collecting, go out and get yourself a 2021 Upper Deck Team Canada Juniors Blue Number 32. That is Connor's card number 32. That card today, mind you, he just played his second game in the National Hockey League against two really good opponents, right? Pittsburgh Penguins on the road, Boston Bruins in Boston. That card is already worth $3,000 today. Now, Connor Bernard signed 2022 Upper Deck Team Canada Juniors rookie card. That is a card number 78. That Upper Deck card number 78 is a three thousand dollar card also oh yeah so folks listen Show me the money! you want to get some of these really good cards wow now a 2023 Connor bedard game dated moments card upper deck card number one 
is a really nice one to get. You can get that one for a little bit less. Now, also, Connor Bedard's PSA, and that is a uh, PSA, one of those card rating authenticity type of companies, right? There's PSA, there's Beckett, there's a few others out there, whatever. But that Connor Bedard PSA 10 by Upper Deck Team Canada Juniors from 2021 is a very valuable card. And also, the Connor Bedard autographed rookie card. It actually has authenticated, believe it or not, yes, DNA <laughs> for his signature. Not really sure how they did that one, but that one is a $1,500 card. So folks, card collecting is a really big deal. You want another great card and you can get this one cheap and that's Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks. This kid is a runaway for Rookie of the Year in the National League. And of course, it was Gunnar Henderson in the American League that likely will walk away with the hardware. But Connor, uh, I, I, Corbin Carroll, excuse me, Corbin Carroll is legit. He finished ranked number seventh in fantasy baseball. 52 stolen bases, hit 285, 25 home runs. A great leadoff hitter for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And let's face it, as a rookie, man, this kid is killing it. I went out and got every damn Corbin Carroll card I could find. All those ones, I got some good ones, some cheap ones. You can get them now for still maybe five bucks or something like that. Corbin Carroll, check it out, folks. Arizona Diamondbacks. This kid is a five-tool player. He is legit. Go get your Corbin Carroll card, and if you can afford it, go get yourself Connor Bedard sports cards as well because these players are going to be around for a long time making history. Back in a few minutes on the circus. Don't go anywhere. Ah, can be fun at the old ballpark, friends. Hi, pop fly. That one be a home run in a phone booth. I know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go buy a pack of? Cracker Jack thinking you're going to get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box. Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from a humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has a barbary <laughs> over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Too think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> that boy, when a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you, you sing about Cracker Jack. I said, did... I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? There's a smash to Squires. He's got it. One, two, three. Nothing or thought. We're going to the bottom of the seven now to score. All tied up. Milwaukee four. The White Sox four. Hey! Everybody! All right, Nancy. Let me hear you.
Yo, Jack McDowell here, Black Jack McDowell, and you're watching the Sports Circus, which is totally cool. So you have a great time watching. Have some fun. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Gary Master Cell, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Folks, again, make sure to check out the SportsCircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, and also all of our partners. You can find those on the partners page at the SportsCircus.com. One of those partners, of course, is Al's number one Italian beef, 1079 West Taylor Street in Chicago's Little Italy. 1079 West Taylor Street. Check them out at alsbeef.com. Alsbeef.com. It crushes that so-called sandwich called the Philly cheesesteak sandwich. This is real cooking, not frying, according to Chris Paselli, owner of Al's Italian Beef. And believe me, folks, if you've never had one, go get one. Check them out at alsbeef.com. Or if you're in Chicago, 1079 West Taylor Street, in Chicago's Little Italy. Nice round of applause for Al's Italian Beef. Al's number one Italian Beef. Yes! By the way, we think of a big round of applause and got a little bit for you here for all you fans back there and all those people that remember the great Michael Jordan playing and the introductions. How about this one, folks? And of course, that always deserves an astounding round of applause. Sorry, folks. Had to do that just because of good A. It's the hometown. It is what it is. But who wasn't a fan of Michael Jordan? Well, maybe the Detroit Pistons. But hey, guess what? A couple of those guys came to join the Chicago Bulls anyway, right? Remember, we had Dennis Rodman make that trip over to Chicago. We also had a guy by the name of Edwards make his way over to Chicago. Another guy, another one of those Detroit Pistons, John Sally, made his way over to the Chicago Bulls. So guess what? If you can't beat them, what do you do? You join them. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the case of the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabres, they've got a little problem. It's not about beating them and joining them. This is about dismissing them. How about that? So the Bills and Sabres reportedly dismissed their chief operating officer, John Roth, and senior vice president, Catherine D'Angelo, due to unethical relationships. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This one's out on all fronts. 
pick your favorite media outlet. It's out there. How about this? So the, the Bills and Sabres have fired the two top members of their front offices. In fact, John Roth, the chief operating officer of both teams, and Catherine D'Angelo, the Bills general counsel. So they're lawyer. So the, the COO and the lawyer. And of course, she is also the senior vice president of business administration. Were both dismissed according to the athletic. How you like them apples? Now, Josh Zerlikowski, senior vice president of finance and business administration, had reportedly been named to the team as their interim chief operating officer. Now, Jim Overdorf, senior advisor to the general manager of football operations and football operations will take over as a general counsel until the external search is finished. Hmm, maybe I should send my application in. <laughs> Not, I won't be doing that one. But Graham was told by multiple sources that the firing stemmed from an unethical romantic relationship between Roth and D'Angelo due to the pair's positions within the organization. Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't matter if they're working for the same company why should they be dismissed that uh, to me look I, I have an opinion on this afterwards we'll just continue on here anyway so the dismissal comes less than a year after roth was hired as the sabers coo in january and then took over as the bill's chief operating officer and executive vice president in july after ron rokuaya was named or better yet was not retained so there's an issue Owner Terry Pagula announced a revamp of the Bills and Sabres business sides after an examination of the organizations. Pagula, who named himself president of the Bills back in July and president of the Sabres in August, how convenient, said the franchises would use a, quote, management committee, close quote, moving forward. Now, Roth, D'Angelo, and Zerlikowski were all members of the four-person committee. D'Angelo, who was elevated to general counsel of the Bills back in April, oversaw security, human resources, and marketing departments. She joined the Bills legal team seven years ago before moving up to assistant general counsel. In 2002, D'Angelo was named interim general counsel after George or Greg Brandon, the Bills' former general counsel, took a leave of absence. All right, so what is the big deal with this? In my opinion, the big deal, look, if these guys have personal lives, they can have personal lives. It's not as if the Bills and the Sabres are commingling certain things that they shouldn't be commingling. How ridiculous is this? What is the big deal? They're two human beings. They have de desires and needs like everybody else. What the hell's going on? Pagula, I think you overstepped your bounds. I think it's ridiculous. And, and frankly, I think the people of Buffalo deserve better. And we've been carrying on WLVL up there. That's the Fox affiliate Yankees network for quite some time. And frankly, the people in Buffalo deserve better ownership. And that is just ridiculous. And it's unaccounted for. Terry Bakula, this is for you. Just stop it already. Here's another just stop it. NCAA football. How about this? How about Deion Sanders? I refuse to call him coach what they say. Deion Sanders. He says essentially on those 10 p.m. Eastern kickoffs. Mind you, he plays in mountain time. He says, quote, they're the stupidest thing ever invented in life. Really? All righty then. Really showing that Florida State education off, aren't you? Now Colorado, of course, hosts Stanford in their upcoming game. That kicks off at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Give me a break. So here it is. Colorado coach Deion Sanders in less than thrilled. He is less than thrilled that his team is playing its second game of the season that begins at 8 p.m. or better yet, 7 p.m. Pacific. Seriously? This guy, remember, came over from the Eastern time zone. Shut up already, Dion. Seriously, nobody wants to hear you complain. How about winning some games before you start popping off? So Colorado hosts Stanford for an 8 p.m. mountain time, local kickoff time when the game came up during his weekly radio show. Dion wasn't shy about letting his true feelings to be known about late games. And he said, quote, who makes these 8 o'clock games? These are the dumbest thing ever, stupidest thing ever invented in life. Who wants to stay up until 8 o'clock for a darn game? What about East Coast? They ever care about ratings or anybody watching? What are we supposed to do with the kids all day until 8 o'clock? What are we supposed to do all day until 8 o'clock? What are you supposed to do in the hotel? What are you supposed to do all day? Close quote. This guy. 
after a brief back and forth with Colorado radio host Mark Jackson, Mark Johnson, Sanders expressed his joy about the school's move to the Big 12 next season. Da, 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 da. Thank God we're not going to be in this conference, he says. And Colorado's next game is a part of a doubleheader for the four-letter network after Tulane plays old, uh, Memphis. And, of course, in Week 3, Colorado hosted Colorado State. They were lucky to win that game. Anyway, look, with all of this said, listen, Dion. First of all, I'm going to go back to your quote. He says, who makes these 8 o'clock games? Well, the scheduling makes it. Get over yourself. The TV markets that pay you eventually. That's who makes it. These are the dumbest thing ever. Stupidest thing ever invented in life. Really? He says, who wants to stay up till 8 o'clock for a darn game? Really? What planet are you on? What about the East Coast, he says? What about them? They're used to staying up late watching games. And if you're such a big deal, Coach Prime, then everyone's going to stay up and watch you anyway. Now, he also says... They ever care about ratings or anybody watching it? Okay, so what are you doing, Deanna? Are you coaching for ratings? Are you coaching for other people to watch you, trying to make your catapult into the National Football League? Is that what this is about? Money? Are you worried about ratings? Or are you worried about winning football games? Now think about that, Deion Sanders. Unbelievable. Then he says, what are we supposed to do all day with the kids until 8 o'clock? What are we supposed to do with the kids till 8 o'clock? How about be a family? Oh, yeah, we forgot about that one, right? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to act like a family. Then he says, what are we supposed to do all day until 8 o'clock? I guess ourselves without the kids. Well, what do adults do, Deion Sanders? What do they do on a Saturday all day? Well, a lot of people are off of work. Those that work Monday through Friday that bust their ass working all week. Well, guess what? They got to make a little money and they need some R&R time. Maybe they're playing golf. Maybe they're fishing. Maybe they're reading to their kids. Maybe they're doing something. Maybe they're having a barbecue. Get over yourself. Then he says, what are you supposed to do in the hotel? You're talking about your team. Your team is out there four hours before the game in the first place. So really, you stay up late. You get up in the middle of the afternoon. Then you go right and play your game. You set up and everything. So stop your complaining. What are you supposed to do in the hotel? Do what you're supposed to do. Rest, eat, study film, Do what you do. You're supposed to be ready. Then he says, what are you supposed to do all day? Well, how about you're supposed to act like a man. You're supposed to act like a leader and stop being a little, you know, I can't say it because this is a G-rated show. Stop being one of those and be a man. Be a leader. Stop looking for attention. You'll get attention when you win games. Stop begging for attention. Oh, well, I'm not going to get this commercial. I'm not going to get paid from this. My kid's not going to get this NIL money and all this other BS. How about this, Deanne? How about shut up and play football or have your team play football and stop looking for attention? Because, frankly, people are getting sick to death of your BS. There it is, Coach Prime. How do you like that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. We'll see you get your asses kicked in the next game. So long, everyone. the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com.